question everybody wants to know. Uh, who can squat more, you or Jalen Hurts? Ooh. That's not even close. You think it's not even close? It's not even close. J- Jalen? Jalen's got you? No. They're what? No. I'm like, I, got it. I don't I do that no more. Off. I don't do that no more. But like when I'm in my, when I was like really in that mindset of squatting and like squat off, I, I'll put myself up there with a lot of people. The squatting mindset, words that I've never said before. About 600 pounds, by the way, Hertz and Barkley kind of pushing that total. What's the number of squats? My right knee is throbbing thinking about that. Welcome to a brand new edition of NFL Total Access. Mike, I'm with you. My guy, Brian Baldinger, in just a moment. A closer look at some fast-rising stars ahead of the draft. We got a defensive star getting paid and the latest on Brandon Ayuk's deal with San Francisco. But we start with mammoth news in New York. And for that, NFL Network insider Mike Garofolo is with us for the latest headlines. And Mike, one of the best players on defense is on the move, and he's going to be wearing green. Yeah, Yammer, the Jet, the Eagles and the Jets, excuse me, uh, basically exchanging pass rushers. Bryce Huff went down there to Philadelphia via free agency. Now we've got a trade. Hassan Reddick, who was looking for a new deal from the Eagles, and the Eagles said, why don't you go out there? And So we're turning a potential third-round compensatory pick into a second-rounder if he keeps performing the way that he has. And the Jets, who lost Huff, be a free agency say we've got ourselves a guy in reddick that we know we can rely upon for some pass rush and sack production now my understanding is there is no deal close or in place as far as the contract goes mike but the hope is that that one will get done in the near future if not the jets could potentially get their own compensatory pick back so a lot of moving parts here but the short version 14.5 14.5 million, that's what the Jets are going to pay Hassan Reddick for this upcoming season, barring a contract extension, which could come in the near future. You know, and it's crazy to me because in some ways, no team wants to lose a guy as talented as Hassan Reddick. But the reality is the business side of it, this does feel like a win-win for both sides. Sauce Gardner weighing in, Joe Dita, in reference to Joe Douglas, their general manager, doing it again. Yes, he has. Brian Baldinger will be joining us uh, here in just now. Oh, there's Baldy. Here there we is. go. All right, a- explain to me, Baldy. You and I were pretty excited before the show having this conversation because if this doesn't signal you were all in from a gang green perspective i don't know what would so tell me what does hassan reddick do for this team's defense well the, the difference honestly between bryce huff and hassan reddick is hassan reddick is a full-time star bryce huff has been a situational pass rusher coming off his best season with the 10 sacks and that's what his role he's not he doesn't really even come close to 50% of the snaps. Hassan beats you. He'll play opposite and start opposite Jermaine Johnson, who really had a breakout season last year for the Jets with Quinn Williams inside. This is what Joe Douglas and uh, Robert Sala want. They want eight deep on the defensive line. Oh, by the way, six of their eight on their front four right now are former first round draft picks, including Hassan, who was the 13th pick in the draft. This is a big upgrade in talent and a proven commodity. And really, they don't have holes on their defense right now. It's sort of next level here. I, I just, it's its wild to me. A year ago, we were talking potentially about this Jets team being a, a contender for the Super Bowl, which was accurate. Rodgers goes down. But this roster right now, at least on paper, looks even better. Meanwhile, uh-huh. the 49ers actually have a little bit of a developing situation here. Brandon Ayuk looking for an extension as he enters his fifth-year option campaign. Clearly getting a little frustrated with the lack of progress on that front. He told Shannon Sharp and Chad Johnson this week on the Nightcap podcast that he's trying to get what he deserves. This season playing football, I figured out who I was as a person, as a player, what I bring to the table, what I bring to the locker room, what I bring um, to the organization, um, and just the value I hold when I walk in that building because um, people going to follow me because I've done it the right way since I've been in that building. From, 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 you know, the first day I walked in there to when I was in there earlier this morning, I've done it the right way. So, um, And if, 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 if they don't see a worth in that, that's all, that's all it is. That's all it is. Okay, um, Mike Garofalo, this has been fun. I actually asked you about this Monday off air when you guys were down there about some developments here. So using emojis, can you explain the latest on the Brandon Ayuk situation? <laughs> we don't have to use emojis here, but he did. Um, exactly. We, I, this, money get, talks. You know. I won't. I, look, go to, the, go to the IG and you can figure this out. But wh- where are we at with this contract? 
Uh, where are we? Well, we're not close. And they have made a recent run at it, from my understanding, Mike Gam. It's not like they haven't had any discussions. They have. Uh, it's their turn, and there's no reason he feels like he shouldn't be next. He believes he's one of the top wide receivers in the league, so he expects to be paid uh, in that realm, and the 49ers are not quite there at this point. So I think we've got some time before this one gets settled either way, but I know that the 49ers would like to eventually get Brandon Ayuk under extended contract, and I know that he would love to be there under the right price. So let's see if they can both get to the point where they agree on something. Yeah, you know, to your point, we've seen some of these big-name guys that wear San Francisco 49er uniforms. It kind of comes down to the wire. So we got a lot of time, I think, before this thing gets done, if recent history is any indicator of that situation. Meanwhile, uh, some other guys getting paid in the state of Florida. Who are they? That's right, and no state tax down there. Let's start with Raheem yes. Mostert, a two-year deal uh, that'll guarantee that he is there or pretty much lock up that he's going to be there for the next two years. Raheem Mostert's done a string of uh, shorter-term deals throughout his career. This one worth up to 9.075. I will round up 9.1 like he got on the screen uh, there over two years, according to a source. Uh, so we saw what Mostert was able to do in that offense, behind that offensive line, and the Dolphins expecting that to continue. Meanwhile, Foye Oluokan, who signed a free agent deal uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars a couple of years ago, now does an extension, three years with $22.5 million guaranteed. So four years overall now, if you add, add it on to the year that he already had left there, uh, the tackling machine there for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I say that just as he makes a tackle. That's how you and the producers who compile the B-roll play nicely together. You see what he's able to do, and you see what the Jaguars believe as far as his worth. A second contract with the Jaguars uh, after signing with them as a free agent a couple of years ago, Mike. Yeah, by the way, you mentioned the no state income tax. I gave you a fist pump, but then I realized that I actually called to my accountant's uh, office today to make sure they got all the returns. I live in California. I don't know why I was excited. I mean, I guess I'm excited for those dudes, but I know what my yeah. tax bill is going to be. Good for them, exactly. he said, from New Jersey to the guy in California. <laughs> no question. Mike, you're the best man. Always appreciate it. If you got some breaking news for us, you will be joining us a little bit later then here on Total Access. Meanwhile, we heard from Saquon earlier in the show, but there's an argument that Barkley is the second best running back in the NFL behind Christian McCaffrey. But with this offensive line in Jalen Hurts, Barkley thinks his impact could be CMC level. I love it. I want to compete. Like, I love the culture. I got to see it. Like, one of my favorite football experiences outside of losing the game <laughs> was when we played them in the divisional playoffs mm -hmm. uh, the year that they lost to you guys in the Super Bowl. Um, like, that was a dope experience. Like, my family was there, and they got to say, like, they haven't had that experience since college, like, because we went to Penn State, and Penn State was jumping. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, I'm just happy to be a part of that culture. Like, let me clear myself up. That's no diss to Giants fans or stuff like that. You know, no. people could take it. But, like, that's a fun culture. I had a, I had a couple good offers. I, had I a, love to hear uh, that. It, it, it was something I needed, like for mm -hmm. your confidence, for your swagger. Like you hit the open market, and you, everyone's talking, and you're in the rumbles, and oh, you're gonna get this, and you're gonna get that. This is what a running market, running back market is, and it's like I was viewed as a weapon. I was viewed as somebody that can come to the team, and you know, I'm not just a, a bruiser back. Like they envisioned me, right. how they use an Alvin, how they use a Christian, and not just saying Philly, like the teams, you know, all the teams are able to offer. I said it before during Super Bowl, I was like Christian McCaffrey, in my opinion, is the best running back in the NFL. That pain me to say because I'm a competitor and like this is the era I'm playing in. I'm playing the same time as him. So it's like I don't want him to be number one. So it's like respect, watch, learn from him. I could pick up some pieces and that's a drive and motivate me to try to, you know, get to Philly and be like, all right, let's really see who the best. There's a lot of factors, Baldy, that should give Eagles fans a lot of optimism around high-level production. I mean, candidly, like, there was an offensive line issue, it seemed like, every single week for the Giants. Obviously, a ton of offensive issues. It doesn't feel like that's going to be the case in Philly with this roster right now. So how good can Barkley be? He can be really good. And maybe he will be second best to Christian McCaffrey. Um, he's been healthy largely the last two years. That's made a difference. Nothing like his rookie year when he had over 2,000 yards. But... You know, if you use him the right way, I mean, he's never played behind an offensive line like they have in Philadelphia. He's going to get runways. He's going to get open holes. He's not going to be dodging guys behind line of scrimmage. Ironically here, Yammer, here he is in his last game as a Giant against the Eagles, Week 18. Now, this happens to be a very good block play, a power play, double team with the guard. You pick up a block by the wide receiver right there, and he's going to find the daylight. You watch him right here in traffic, all right? There's Nolan Smith right there, just low hurdle right there in stride. He's got the vision and the moves to be able to spin and gain the extra yard. But this is the Christian McCaffrey part of him. 
You can line him up anywhere on the field. You want him to run fly sweep? Well, he scored two rushing touchdowns against the Eagles in that Week 18 matchup. And then you want to run him on this and then run him on a route. He's got man coverage out here. The Eagles don't adjust well. He runs the wheel right now. He can run the deep route as a running back. You want a matchup? He'll go down and he'll scorch you. He'll get behind your defense. He's got great, soft, velvety hands. In the playoff game against Minnesota two years ago, matched up with Eric Kendricks one-on-one. Like, linebackers don't want to see this. Just like they don't want to see it with Christian McCaffrey. You know, Kellen Moore is the new offense coordinator. you got to find those kind of matchups where you feel like Saquon Barkley is, you know, a winner in that. And you find those the way Kyle Shanahan has done with Christian McCaffrey. And suddenly you're looking at, hey, Saquon could put up 2,000 yards next year in Philadelphia. Yeah, it's wild. I mean, just think about some of those other guys, Smith, Brown, Jalen Hurts, who just two years ago, we were talking about him as a potential MVP guy. And yet in the Giants offense, he was the focal point of every single defense. So you got to imagine oh, no huge numbers potentially for him. He's not the only running back, though, that we have now seen on the move. And a little bit of tough sledding here, I think, if you're Aaron Jones. You get, the good news is you get to play your former squad in the Packers, and you have some new headwear. That's kind of a win. A little experience for him. Should be fun to match up against that Packers squad. Matt LaFour, his old coach, spoke to our Tom Pelissero at the league meetings this week. Biggest change, I think, on the roster into this offseason, obviously a big change of running back. Take me through how that played out. What do you get in Josh Jacobs, and how hard was it having Aaron Jones? I'm going to come back to the YouTube of mine. The video today, I'm going to show you how to make it look good. Now, let's start. Let's start. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make it look good.
Mình xong các bạn ạ. Xin chào tất cả các bạn đã quay trở lại với kênh youtube của mình Video ngày hôm nay mình sẽ hướng dẫn các bạn tô màu sao cho thật đẹp Bây giờ chúng ta cùng bắt đầu nhé Thank you. 
bố to Bây giờ mình đã tô màu xong các bạn ạ. 